Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. On today's show I'm joined by many guests but my first guest today is Stephanie Adlington, singer, songwriter and jazz singer extraordinaire. So Stephanie thank you so much oh, for joining on Cuppa TV. thank you. I'm so excited you guys are back. Oh it's just wonderful. Now we first met when yes. we came over earlier this year. Yes. And I briefly saw you then but so much has been going on. Oh my since God. I last saw well you. first of all you came in May which yes, you had the right. lovely summer and oh. now we're here in autumn yes. so we're going into winter but autumn's yeah. a beautiful time. Oh, and we've had such amazing here. weather since yes, we've been here it's been nice. and the trees the fall actually mm. the fall as you call it it's just um, it's just been incredible yeah it, but it's lovely to have you here thank you so Sophie tell me what you've been doing first of all let's start at the very beginning how did you start your your musical career oh my gosh um I was always I had a little record player growing up and I was always playing records and singing along and I kind of started singing before I could talk and I would just sit around and play records and, and sing and just that was my playtime, yeah. and I just started doing that, and it was something that always kind of stayed with me. And in the fourth grade, we were doing a uh, Miss Springs show, a little show she was putting on, and we were singing My Heart Belongs to Daddy, and I kind of hit a note that I didn't know was, you know, different, and everyone just stopped and looked at me, and I felt very strange, and she said, no, continue, so I did, and everyone oh, so went, oh, Steffi it. sings. Wow. <laughs> sing at all? No, not no. at all. Is that, so where do you think it came from? No idea. Any of your no any of the relations any further down the line? Not that I know of. No, my parents both love music, mm. so we grew up with music all the time. My dad was a big kind of 50s, 60s influence, mm. loves the Stones, loves all that, but my yeah. mom also loved a lot of musicals and a lot of, uh, of Julie Andrews mm. and Judy Garland, and so we yeah. grew up kind of with both sides of the yeah. spectrum with music, so it was wonderful to kind of have that you know, growing Background, up. Background, yes, yeah. absolutely. And your your sound is very unique. Thank Stephanie. you. It's very unique. I mean, I've, we've, we're going to talk about your album because yeah. you've just released that. But it's it's a very unique sound. Was that on purpose? Did you want to be different? Well, not really. I started out, you know, well, first of all, I was a classical uh, soprano. So I went to the Royal Academy of Music. So that's kind of where I started. Oh. And I loved classical music, but I still wanted to do a little bit of musical theater and, and kind of use the soprano voice for that. Mm -hmm. But then after I graduated, I thought, oh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. So I moved to Nashville and started changing my voice around. And, and it went from this octave to kind of this octave. And so I realized a lot of the songs that I used to sing classically, I could sing now in a jazz style. It's the same thing, just different range. And instead of being Julie Andrews, now I wanted to be, you know, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I just kind of started with that. But then I also, I'm very Southern and I love Southern literature and I love Southern culture and, and blues and, mm -hmm. and jazz and blues. You know, really, that's completely American. That's really one of the only things that we have contributed to yes. society. <laughs> So, so welcome to the blues. Exactly. So, but it is, it's very, and here in Nashville, I mean, there's a very, different genre of, genres of music, mm -hmm. but it's known for its country. Yes. Its but it's not just that, is it? Oh my gosh, Nashville? no, it's Music City. So we really mm -hmm. have everything. And what I love about it are the musicians here play everything as well. So they might be on the road with a, with a country act, but they really want to play jazz. Mm -hmm. So when you can grab them in between shows or, you know, when you start gigging or collaborating, there's really no rehearsal. I mean, you get together, you make music, it's live, it's a moment and then you all go home and then do it again next week. And it's, it's wonderful to be able to play with players that have that ability, you don't have to worry about them. And then it's not so contrived and rehearsed that you can't just really live the moment and, and just realize that what making music is. And I'm, I'm worried that live music is kind of taking a back seat do you anymore. think that? Do you think that? Do you think that's how yeah. it's going at the moment? I do. I do. A lot of venues. Uh, one of my favorite jazz venues that was here. I sang at for a long time. Closed, and and so they were going to reopen, and they didn't. And you know, so I really hope the live aspect doesn't leave, because the live aspect is what creates the sound and creates the vibe and, and gives you a moment. So instead of sitting there and. and you know, recording it from your little iPhone so you can take it away. Just live the moment. Mm -hmm. Live what that memory is. And, and that's I mean, what makes you feel. With, with, when you say they've closed, you know, is it because there's no interest or is it just because... I really uh, don't you, know. You know. This just... city is growing mm. tremendously, which is wonderful. But at the same time, we don't want to lose what we had. Mm. So there's, there's that balance of, of wanting to grow and, and to become bigger and, and better, but also don't let the progress take away from what Nashville was basically based on, which was publishing and music back mm. in the day. And the little clubs along the way where people got started. Mm. I mean, we've got some very famous clubs here. Tootsie's, of mm -hmm. course, is a famous club. And we've got the Ryman Auditorium. Yes. And of course, the Grand Old Opry. Is it, do you feel that the bigger ones are taking, you know, things away from the littler clubs? Or do you think there's just a balance, equal balance? I think there's an equal balance. I, um, the Ryman was my very first job in town. I don't know if you knew this or not, but when I first no, moved here, I was a tour guide that. and an usher at yeah. the Ryman. And so, you know, I was always backstage, and this was the first time in my life I was kind of forced to be front of house. And it was, 
devastating a little bit, you know, from a pride point of view, because yes. you can't even get backstage. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, I literally for two years witnessed every show that came to town, every genre of music, and it was phenomenal. I thought I knew a lot graduating school. I was like, oh, you know, I have my degrees. I'm... But I realized I knew nothing. And did that inspire you to oh, carry completely. on doing what you're doing now? And, and all these different genres really started. I, I think that's how I'm kind of what I am now. People say, what do you do? Well, I'm a little bluesy. I'm a little jazzy. I'm a little Americana, definitely in lyric. Mm -hmm. What does that create? I don't know. And I definitely want this this kind of southern, dark, haunted vibe, which is why I went to Savannah, Georgia, and, and had the photo shoot for the EP. Yes, Because yes. it has that definite, you know, the, the Spanish moss and the trees and the, the, the southern square and, and Bonaventure Cemetery. It was just mm -hmm. this, this beautiful kind of um, haunted southern vibe to it yes. that I really wanted to bring into the music and have it as a visual yeah. as well. So you've just released your first... Um, EP. Yes. So that's very exciting. It's very yes. exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> so and a lot of hard work, doesn't it? Goes into making this. So of course you start at the beginning. How did that come about? Oh my gosh, writing the songs mm -hmm. is really where it started, and then trying. Do you to write all your own songs? I do. Different? Now on this, there's four originals and one cover. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I do try to write a lot, and I'm trying to write in the style of what I love, which is the old standard, but have it be new and fresh. So my goal is to have somebody listen to it and go, oh, who used to sing that? And well, no one, me. <laughs> <laughs> I sing yes, that. I sing that. It's my but, song. But Billie Holiday could have, <laughs> yes, which right, would have been yeah. wonderful to hear. And when you're writing, Stephanie, is it, do you always sort of write with that sort of jazz feel in your head? Is that the sort of, or do you just write and see how it's going to turn out? Or are you going to put yourself in that jazz genre of I music? think I'm always in the jazz mm. genre. I think it's always in my head. It's in my, my being. But it is a very deep Americano sound. Yeah. I and mean, obviously I've heard it. And it's, there's a, it's a lovely tone to your, you know, to your voice Thank and to the you. sound of it as well. So rather unusual, actually, Thank here you. in Nashville. Because again, it, there is very, very, very genres of music but I haven't heard one quite like yours thank so, you so much again it's it, that's a good thing though isn't it yeah. for you I hope so but then a lot of people say well who do you sound like and I don't know who no. I sound like so uh, they try to categorize you so they know what to do with you yes. but at the same time I feel like well there's already 10 of them can't we do something different? But then they don't know what to do with yeah, it's you. It's interesting so. you say that because another um, singer-songwriter we were talking to said exactly the same thing. I suppose you have to go in some kind of genre because then they know where to put you. But right. sometimes when you're not quite fitting, it's a bit difficult, isn't yeah. it? I should, I should imagine. And I think it's more exciting because yeah. that's the type of, of music I gravitate towards, something that's different and interesting. And what can I learn from that? And what do I take away? And Because it doesn't sound like everything else. Yeah. What is their inspiration? How did they come up with that? So how did you go about writing it? So you, when did you start writing Oh, goodness, a long time. It basically took about two years to get to this point because I'm funding the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing that, you have to kind of go of in course, stages yeah. and, and, then, and then pick your people that you want to work with and, and hope they want to come on board. Um, but it really started with the music. I think the first song I had written was Willow Sway. And as soon as I wrote that, I, I knew the feel. I had been looking for this, it had been in my head, and how do you now bring that from here to here, which is really difficult. And as soon as that song happened, I thought, okay, this is it. Mm -hmm. Now I need to, to keep everything in this vein because this is what I really want to, you know, contribute. And then from there, I, I read a book called, um, I actually got it from my father. It was called Driving with the Devil, the History of NASCAR, because my dad's a NASCAR fan. And I was bored one day, and I picked the book up. Well, the, the entire history of NASCAR was the bootlegger. Yeah. And so I'm reading this book like, oh my gosh, these men are so amazing. I have to write a song about this yeah. because it's also the time period that I love, you know, Prohibition and, yeah. and that kind of the, the vintage vibe of what was going on musically and, and, and culturally and, and fashion wise. And I just love that whole scene. Mm -hmm. So I thought I have to write about this amazing man. Yeah. So that's where Bootlegger's Blues oh, that's came, where from. It came from. And yeah. Sugar, which yes, is the yes, song that you yes, like. I like um, that one. It's kind of about the battle of good and evil, which is basically mm -hmm. all Southern Gothic literature. Mm -hmm you know, and, and, and what happens to your soul in the process. It's very, um, very deep, very meaningful songs. Thank you. Something. Again, was that on purpose? Did you want to? Um, I think that's just me. Just you, I just the way you write. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never just here. Yes. <laughs> It's okay. You're a creative. You're allowed to do that. It can that. never just be a pillow. That's, that's what you have to be. Yeah. Like, yes, have to be decorated pillow. <laughs> so, but now tell us about. So you went to. Where did you go for your shoot to feel this amazing? Well, Savannah, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So it was wonderful. Um, Tracy Fitzgerald was the photographer on that, and he was going to be in Savannah anyway. And he mm -hmm. said, if you want to come down, because it really had the whole vibe of what I wanted. And, and we went and spent about two days. And just went everywhere. We went to Bonaventure Cemetery. We went to the square. We went to uh, the house, Mercer House, which was um, Midnight in the, in the Garden of Good and Evil, one of my favorite books. Oh, wow. And and took pictures kind of all around. And, and I just soaked up 
the energy of that city and, and it was just beautiful and it was in the summertime it was like July and it was so hot but I wanted that because yes. that's really the feel the of the music steamy, as well the, the very sort of humidity and, yeah. and I mean you had some great shots thank you see that's where the, your album covers come from yeah. and it's self-titled yes your album. it is so was it all that you expected it to be um yeah, I think so. I'm really proud of it, um, which is the most exciting thing, I think. You know, I, we all write songs and we all demo it and we, we do this, and sometimes it's like, well, it wasn't exactly what I wanted or it didn't quite have that, but this really turned out to have the vibe that I wanted mm -hmm. and the darkness, um, but, um, and I'm really glad that you can relate to it because, you know, forever you, you think about this and will anyone else understand it or gravitate toward it or even like it. And, and so far the response I'm getting is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's different, which then makes people stop and, and think about mm -hmm. it and then want to listen. And if you can get them to listen a couple times, mm -hmm. hopefully then they're going to, you know, really enjoy yeah. it and share it with other people. Now you've been doing shows. Yes. So now are you going to be doing, singing some of your songs on those yes, shows? Yes, always. Fantastic. Yes. So a lot of the, the shows I'm doing right now are more jazz based. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing, you know, a lot of jazz standards and then putting my material in with it but I'm also trying to find jazz standards that fit my material so it becomes more of a collaborative um, event rather than just oh this song this song this song everything kind of fits together lyrically stylistically um, you know yeah and do you have do you work with the same musicians when you go around I try you try to do that but this town is difficult because yeah. there's always a gig going yeah. on so, so. <laughs> You, We're you, finding that out. <laughs> I know. So, so you've got to find players yeah. that, well, first of all, it, it's got to be people you, you really admire mm -hmm. and respect and then are just wonderful people in general, and that's, that's a lot of people in mm -hmm. town. And then, you know, hope that they're going to be free, and if they're not, then, you know, you kind of go to the, the next one and the next one and the next one. But, you know, your number 10 guy is just as good as your number one guy yeah. here. That's, that's one thing mm -hmm. that we're very blessed with. So. And do you love performing live? Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. You just never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's sometimes, you know, you do something and, and you create something that, oh, that was really interesting, I want to remember that. And other times it goes completely horrible and you're like, oh, let's just forget that ever happened. Thank God that was a moment and hopefully no one recorded it. And where would you, where would you like to play in Nashville, Tennessee or anywhere in the States? Is there anywhere oh, you particularly like to gosh, play? Gosh, I really want to do jazz festivals. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, yes. I think the jazz festivals would, would definitely bring in, you know, that audience yeah. plus be able to branch it out because a lot of the festivals now are including different genres within that. But it's still kind of that's the main core. So I really want to start doing some of that type of thing all over the place. Yeah. I don't care where it is. I just now, want to are you going to come to the UK? Yes, we've heard yes, it. She's yes. coming, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out! Oh, and I'm so excited because I haven't been back for so long. Yeah. So it's going to be wonderful to come and wonderful. reconnect with friends and reconnect with the culture. And, yeah. and, and that would be, be great. There. Now Birmingham have a jazz festival. So yes, you're hoping to to showcase there, aren't yes. you? So, and the, the, yes, and the A and R company I'm working with mm. are you know we're going to be working with that. So Fantastic. it's going to be amazing to get up there yeah. and, and to. Uh, just to be back again. And where was the last time you were in the UK? Oh, late 90s. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so it's been a while. Yeah. But all oh, my friends, that's the wonderful thing about Facebook and, yeah. and email. I, I'm, yeah, I'm social still in touch. media, you can still keep in touch with people, can't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah. And how do you see your future, Stephanie? What would you like to do? I want to perform, I want to write, I want to record, I want to continue to create. And um, the, the um, I call myself the Siren of the South mm -hmm. because I really want to bring that into the picture so it, it's not so much just the music but it's again it's the culture it's the literature it's it's the um the history trying to bring all that into this package so that way when people listen to it not only with the, with the bootlegger if someone gets interested in oh well, well that's an interesting story well what's the history of that because I'm also an educator, so you know that, that's kind of my day job. I'm a, I'm a voice teacher and I'm a university professor. So it's it's one of those things to really bring education into what you're doing, because I feel like you know you have a platform. You should teach something as well as as just you know bringing something. Almost give important. back. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you enjoy that? Do you I enjoy love that. Nice? I love it very much. Yeah. You know, and and just being able to share what I like with other people, and then when people gravitate towards that, or then they teach me something I didn't know, then we get all excited about it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a wonderful thing listening to you. Obviously, you've got the passion. Thank you. you. Know, it's great. Is there any one particular place in the world that you'd love to perform? New Orleans. Really? Yes, yeah. I really want to go yeah. to New Orleans. Harry Connick Jr. is one of my absolute favorite mm. performers. Yeah. Uh, he's singers. a great singer, oh, actor, my gosh, songwriter, absolutely. very Everything. talented man. Yes. Mm. And, you know, he's one that's really brought, you know, the jazz genre yes. back to life. Yeah. I think it was the first time I heard him was the When Harry Met Sally yes. soundtrack. Mm. And all of those that. songs were really starting to come back yeah. again. And I credit him for that. Um, because it was kind of a lull there, you know, it really wasn't happening. Do you feel that jazz is making its sort of comeback? Because, I mean, we've got, we've got very 
brilliant clubs in yes. the UK. Of course, Ronnie Scott's yes. springs to oh, mind. Oh my gosh, that's another um, venue you know, I would that's, love that's to play. That's a great venue for jazz. Um, is, there, is there places like that all over the world, probably, that you'd like, like yes. to perform at? Oh my gosh. Well, again, the history of just being there, you know, Birdland in New York and, and, and different places yeah. like that. And, and Ronnie Scott's, it's so funny. Yeah. When I was a student and I'd always walk by it, you kind of just go and you look inside oh. and you see what's happening. But I never went I in. one day you might be performing there. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Stephanie, it's been absolutely wonderful to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on Cup of TV. Thank you. And look forward to seeing you back in the UK. Yes, and I can't wait till you come back again. Brilliant, lovely, thank you. So that's it. We're going to take a quick break, but stay with me and come back and join me in just a minute.